Mike Zero, Foxtrot, X-Ray, Bravo, Digital, Ham Radio, Diary. Thanks, but yep, so you've got your nice FT3D and you want to start using it on the WireZX system using... Oh, nice and loud. Uh, as you can see, it works. Using a, a, a jumbo hotspot, just like this. And you've bought it. It's already got the SD card in it. It's been it's been configured, but they haven't added your Wi-Fi details. So you still need to get it and add add your details. Now, if you if you ever buy one of these from one of the main sellers, you, it would make sense to tell them to do this for you, to configure it, and then put in your core sign and add your Wi-Fi details. So you, so then it will be plug and go. But if not, this is what you have you you'll have to do. You'll have to get it and take the SD card out like so and then using a an adapter same as this one you just put the SD card in this adapter like so and then plug that into your USB on your PC and then follow the rest of the video so we've um, we've got our SD card in the adapter plugged into our laptop so we're this is where what we want to achieve is to get to this PyStar page so we can put in our settings. So how are we going to do that? So go to PyStar.uk and you'll have this page here. You've got all these selections on the left. Go down to the one here on the left called PyStar Tools. There you are. And in a light grey you'll see where it says Wi-Fi Builder. Select that. Now this is where we're going to put in our SSID and our basically our username and password for our home router. Now it needs to be the same one that you would say use for your laptop and computer at home and even your phone because they all need to be on the same network. So let's just make one up for now. So we'll just call it my hotspot as a username and a password we'll call it my jumbo. That's just a random one, but you'll know your own one. When you click Submit, a file will appear down here on the left. So click Submit. So we're creating what they call, it's called a WPA file. And it says it here, WPA Supplicant Conf. It's basically a file that you're going to put in your SD card. That when, the, when you put it back into the Jumbo Spot, when the Jumbo Spot boots up, it will instantly know the username and password of your router and it will connect and be part of the network. So click submit. So here's the file. So literally just, um, I would click the arrow, click show in folder. Uh, and then I would select it and I would right click your mouse and click copy. Just hold that in there. Then you want to find you've plugged in the SD card so you need to find that now I just click file here at the bottom and it appears but you could put in here put in this if you're in Windows 10 like I am this PC and um, scroll down and look there it is there it's, it's going to be called boot if it's if you've low if it's got the correct image on it when you bought it it's going to be a boot image so boot image here so all you do is just click that you can make it bigger if you want right click anywhere and paste click paste because you've copied it in there now scroll to the bottom you see there's a couple here but we only want one so yours will just say wpa supplicant but once you've done that then you it's in there now you literally just have to take the sd card out and put it back into the jumbo spot okay we've got our sd card out of the pc i'm going to put it into my jumbo spot here just slips in there that way round. I've taken the case off because I find it easier, but you don't have to. So next thing to do is to power it up. So you just get your micro USB. About one amp, five vo volts is what you need. And just plug it in and the whole thing will start flashing. Now you work the TV screen, the little OLED screen won't start working yet. We've got a, a bit more to configure yet, so let's uh, let's go back to the laptop PC and let's work out how we can actually find this uh, in our browser and then change the settings so that it would work on our C4FM WireZX uh, radios. Okay, so you've got the SD card uh, back in the 
in the hot spot. Um, type in this, type in pi or lowercase dash star dot local with a, a slash like that and hit enter now if you were like me on windows 10 you'll get it'll sort of show it in blue so click that and you could put http in front it will say this and then it will on its own it will say it will ask for a username and password so this is basically saying right you've connected to me so that's good news now log in and set me up for for what you want to do so the username is pi dash star lowercase pi dash star and then the password for, for all these hotspots is r a s p b e r r y and that's for all these jumbo hotspots pi star system log in and you're going to get to this page here so what we've got to do now is we've got to tell it who we are and what we're going to use and what we're going to use it for so you're in the basically the configuration page so I'm going to put in my uh, frequency that I use for my um, C4FM hotspot, which is 431.550. That's what I use. Now check your band plan to make sure you're okay. And then I put in my call sign, M0 in caps, M0FXB. Uh, and I... Um, <clears throat> The C4 FM, C4 FM is one of the easiest ones to set up. So don't touch this at the top. You've got the little blue selection here, simplex node, MMDVM. I haven't changed that. That's default. Leave that alone. Get your call sign in there, your frequency in there, and then hit apply changes. Now it does take a, a minute to reboot. So on this page, We've now got YSF selected and we've got our modem. It's all looking good. And by default, if you go down further, Yesu System Fusion Configuration, by default, default, um, it's gone to FCS 00290 American Link YSX, probably because that's what I used before and it remembers. But you've got a long list here of things you can choose. Now, you can change on the radio, <clears throat> but you also can change on the using this Pi Star page. So I'll just show you the dashboard and that will show you the stations that are coming in. So you just click dashboard and as stations come in and whenever you key the microphone, you will see this page and it will be a long list. Right, so the next thing we need to do is just, we're gonna show you, well, I think the next thing will be, let's program a channel into, um, into our FT70 or FT3D. Let's do that and then we'll show you the hotspot working with the channel and that's that's the video done. M0FXB, how to add your hotspot to your Yesu FT3. Well Fusion is the simplest uh, digital mode out there so you literally have to just add one memory channel. So my hotspot is on 433500 so you can see you just go into VFO mode by selecting the V here. That's, yeah, that's like memory. No replacement for this button. And that's um, VFO. So we go 433500. You just hit FMW on the screen. Sorry, you hold it. Um, hit memory right. Then it gives you the option to, to name it. So let's call it um, G uh, T L G T J. That'll do. And that's it. Then you go back using the back button. You hit your memory. And there it is. GTJ. I mean, you can have a, a, any name you like. That's the great thing about the FT3. They've given you that. You can have many digits. 
So there's my other memories, but go to memory 16 that was. And there it is. And then all you do is on your Jumbo Pistar software, go into configuration and set the frequency the same as that. And when you key, you will talk to the Pistar, M0FXB. So when it's up and running, go to your dashboard, select dashboard here. And as people speak, and you'll hear them, it'll go red for TX. And you'll get call signs come on the radio and you'll get a list of everyone talking. And on the, on the left here, it just says that you're in YSF and you're listening. There's your frequency and your, um, your hat version. And it says we're linked to Hubnet. And uh, so this is what you're going to see when it's all up and running. And obviously you've got configuration page where you can update and change things. So we've configured it. We just want to show you how to use Y as X. So it's got the X button here. So select X. I would only connect if someone's not speaking. So let's just try again. Let it time out. It's quite busy on this channel, you see. Right. Right, let's hit it now. Right, you hear that? You get that noise when no one's speaking. At the moment, it shows that we are connected to Hubnet, sorry about the glare in this room, but that's what's happening. So all you do, you've got a couple of options. You can select Hubnet or you can select, select Search Direct, it says here. So hit that and you can click All and it will list all the rooms. There you are and you can select one of the rooms. If you search direct there, you can actually type in a room number or a room name and hit enter and search it. And that's another way of doing it. So we'll just try. I'm not sure if it'll work, but let's just go because it's a bit busy on there. Let's go C. Let's just type in CQ. And uh, where are we? There you go. Go enter. Oh, there's the that right. Well, it won't let you select when someone's talking. So it's sort of waiting for someone to stop speaking. Right. Eventually, when people stop speaking, it did do that. I just put in the word. Look at all these CQ things that have come up. So you just scroll down to the one you want. Probably need to just tap it on, the, uh, you turn it and then just tap the one you want. Let's do CQ UK. And then what it will do is when someone's not speaking, it will connect to that room. Let's go back. Back. There you go. So uh, that's the sort of using the wires X so you can use the radio to control which rooms you, you connect to. 7-3, thanks for watching.